Hey, aficionados, Winston Goodfellow here with Gary Patterson, CEO of Shelby. You guys go by Shelby Present. American or Shelby Automobiles these days? What are you doing? Shelby American. Okay, just, just got like it. Just got a check. And then President Aaron Shelby, grandson of Carol Shelby, big muckety muck in the company as well. <laughs> and I, I hope you like the title you were given. Uh, that's a good title. I got yes. that on my card. Yes. Gentlemen, I'm curious on something because most people think of Shelby with Mustangs and Cobras and this, that, and the other thing. What a lot don't know is you guys make more of these than you do of cars. That's exactly right. As someone who has Shelby on their driver's license, what do you think about that? Does it seem strange or? Yeah, you know, Carol always liked to experiment with new vehicles. And so he did a, actually align a Shelby truck with Dodge way back when as well. And so even That's after right. when yep. he was in the 90s, in between car companies, he was doing truck mods on things just to try it out. So I think when uh, Shelby American started in 2013 with the new Ford Shelby mm -hmm. collaboration on the truck side, it was a natural progression if you look at where the market is and the truck popularity of trucks today. I had forgotten about his relationship with, we'll just call it the D word period. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, then we got, we got one mother here that's taller than all of us. And one guy here that's shorter than all of us, basically. Right. What's, what's up? Well, you know, Winston, it's, it's like a different flavor of ice cream. We all like ice cream. We all like trucks, right? So we might as well have one that's easier to get in, goes quicker around corners. It might do zero to 60 in 3.45 seconds. So that's more of that truck. This truck, a little bit bigger. So we start on with an F-250 chassis, and we have a 6.7 liter turbo diesel that makes over a thousand pound feet of torque. Right? And then of course we put all the Shelby treatments on with the hood and the big bumpers and lights and suspension and wheels and tires and you know, so it's it's bad boy. So then the question is, Mr. Patterson, has this had the, uh, how do we call it, the boat speed test? And of course. <laughs> So do we, sh shall we explain what the boat speed test is all about? <laughs> well, I think you should lead on the boat speed test because that seems to be a, a thing for you. Well, this is great because what? So for him, there's no such thing as too much horsepower. Correct. Except for? Well, if you have enough that you can accelerate fast enough with your pressure suit on, you know, like the F-16 fighter pilots, and you still black out from the acceleration, that might be enough. <laughs> so, coming from that point of view, there was one time Gary was telling me about, he was curious whether his truck would be faster than his power boat on Oh, water. there was that, yeah, I yes. forgot about that. Oh. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a thing where we would go to the lake and was the GPS reading higher towing than it was with the boat on the lake. And the boat would do 107. So, you know, yes. you, can, you can decide. Yeah. And the bottom line was, if memory serves me correctly, the truck with the boat on the trailer was faster than just the boat on the water. That's correct. Yes. So therefore, have you done the boat speed test with I have not. I have not, but it's a good point. I'll have to look for some speed rated trailer tires because, you know, sometimes that was an issue. So, you know, while we're talking yes. about that, but really the cool thing about these trucks is unlike the truck that was towing the boat at the time, these are far more powerful. So I'm sure that that would be a distant memory. How much testing have you done with these things? How much fun have you had? Well, we've got pictures of it in the air. I was just about to ask, how because, much air you know, have you got? Even though how? this is a big boy, yeah. you know, actually Vince did it, not me, you know, because oh, I can't yes. just have all the fun myself, right? We've got a picture of Vince, not this specific truck. We had one that was blue, and he's got a picture of it actually in the air in the sand dunes. Yeah, so. and no CGI on this one, real deal. So, That's exactly right. What about, what about you, Aaron? Are you going out and catching air in trucks? Uh, it's not my speed. No, I'm a little more on the, on the street kind of guy. So I like the speed of the trucks on the road and see where we go with that. We don't have a whole lot of uh, off-road opportunity around Dallas right now, so. <laughs> yeah, Dallas keeps getting more crowded. It does. Or so sure. it seems. Yep. So what's, uh, what are sales on these things like? Is one preferred to the other? 
it's really just as Gary said, it's just kind of the flavor of the month and what somebody wants. There is a passionate crowd for this street truck here, and there's a passionate crowd for this F-250 Super Baja as well. So it's interesting, and it, while I say I only go on the street, I've got some clients in Dallas that love this truck, and I don't think they've ever had it off-road. They just want a big truck. Yeah, that says Shelby on it, exactly. blah, blah, blah. So uh, give me some more specs on these. So, uh, Gary, you were saying over a 1,000 uh, pound, pound feet, feet of, of torque. torque. Yeah. But that one is a gasoline engine, supercharged, 5-liter, Coyote, you know, 32-valve, double road can V8, uh, makes 800 horsepower. So, you know, but it's an F-150. Yes. So it's surprisingly fast, and it handles well, and it stops well. So that's good. It's we all, had, you know, Shelby's about performance. Yes. Performance is our business, as his grandfather would say. So it we, continues to be. We had some fun with this, like, two, three years ago. I'm trying to remember when we did that shoot. Uh, Monterey. Yes. Maybe two years ago? Yeah. I think. And I was dumbfounded by how much I like these things. It's a very nice truck. Yes. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, quarter mile time? I what? don't have that for that yet. So I don't know. I don't I'm know actually a little staggered. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Very, very rarely do we get that answer. I know it would eclipse 100 miles an hour because it gets to 108.8 .8 seconds. <laughs> so I can tell you the trap speed would be very quick, like faster than most of these muscle cars in the 60s would have run back in the day. Yes. So, and now you can do it in a truck. That's right. With your arm hanging out the window. Oh, no, 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 no. Air conditioning on. I was got going nice right there. tunes. I mean, all the creature comforts in the world. And it gets better fuel economy. No drama, no fuss. You can have passengers. Yes. You know, yeah. makes it nice. And, of course, the number one consideration for you is fuel economy. <laughs> well, that could be. But uh, usually I don't get that great of fuel economy because I have a problem with, with this foot. <laughs> it just got heavy. That's all. Oh yeah, it's. Let's put it this way: when you go out with this guy behind the wheel, you're having some fun. Yep. So, yeah. and you know, I did win the fuel economy contest at Hallett Motor Speedway one year, uh, where they had a, a fusion hybrid, and we, they had everybody drive it. And all I did was drive the race line, and I proved that I could be. <laughs> Not that I'm competitive. But I got yes. the little trophy at home. It says I had the best fuel economy. But don't tell anybody. That was that was top secret. Yeah. Ruined my image. No question. Well, gentlemen, shall we take a, a walk sure, along let's here? let's go. Talk some cars. Super Snake is a nameplate that has been with Shelby since 1967 when they did a one-off one GT500 with a 427 in it. There was a smoke and cool piece that was realistically the fastest car that year because it was tested 170 plus miles an hour. And then at Fire, it was with Firestone, with the tires, if I remember correctly, that it was, uh, that it did like 140 miles an hour for 24 hours with Carol behind the wheel part of the time? It was not, I don't believe okay. so. Okay. So what, when I say Super Snake to you, what, is, what does that mean? So to me, when you hear Super Snake, to me it's the Mustang. And it's what, it was, as Carol got back with Ford, and that's what we do at Shelby American Day is kind of our top line is the Super Snake line for the Mustang today. So you've got that same Super Snake stripe that we use. It's the highest performance piece that we have on the Mustang that's roadworthy. And that's really what it means is just the epitome of that performance side for Shelby American. Gary, tell me about the development of this, how it has progressed. Started in 2007, Winston. So uh, in 67, the Mustang that you guys just described was the best of the best. It's yep. high speed. It had a 427, you know, like a NASCAR engine instead of a 428. So when you take this, we took a, a GT500 Mustang um, that was built by Ford under license in 2007. We said, oh, gee, what could we do with this? Right? Well, the DNA of Shelby says what? Performance That's is our business, more, yes. right? More is better. More is better. So we changed the hood, we changed the wheels and the tires and the brakes and suspension, you know, and we put more power in it. So instead of just 500 horsepower in 2007, we had 725 horsepower, right? And, and that car actually did, since you want all these quarter mile things, quarter mile was 1087 at 134 miles an hour, according to Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forge Magazine. So, so and it's, I should have remembered the whole 2007 here. When I was saying 2013, but we're basically talking this body style platform. It was because when I first went to you guys, 
and you handed me, you said, okay, which super snake do you want? And I said, okay, what's it, 605 horsepower, if I'm remembering, was, well, was the Well, that was the convertible amount. version. Okay. And it was only 620, or 605. But, yes. But you could get the 725. And so I said, oh, Gary, 605 is good enough for me for now. And you said, yeah, for about the first 50 feet. So, <laughs> which is, okay, okay I'm going to like this guy. <laughs> And that, that, that was a classic. So we started 605, 725. Yeah, so then, that car continued to evolve, right? And so this one, you know, being a 23, right? So we're not, we don't have the 24 yet. But the 23, what we did is we did the same formula. But over time, we've learned, right? And we've, we've gotten better tooling and better components so yes. the body panel fit and finish and you know all those things is much more refined but there's a lot of things also on here that are better right the things that you don't just necessarily see like the half shafts instead of the factory half shafts which are very good but when you add a lot of horsepower like the 825 yes. you need better half shafts you need better wheel studs and things like that so you can actually kind of see those but yes. not the half shafts so we got the Borla exhaust we got the better half shafts all those kind of things and then the interior we've done some nice bits inside so that when you sit in the car you look out over the hood what are those touch points that you see how do you feel when you're yeah. behind the wheel of the car how does it shift how does it feel when you steer so we've really worked on refining all of those things in addition to being really fast Tell me a little bit about the development process, because I'm assuming it's mainly you and Vince that are out doing it on the track, or is, is there much more that goes into it? Really, it's a, it's a real team approach, right? So at Shelby, we, you know, it's kind of like the movie Ford versus Ferrari. It's not just you know the two people at the top, it's all the people that bring to the table other things. Vince and I do have a lot to do with it, but and we're the ones that typically drive the cars on the track yes. and push the limits. And that's one of the ways that we found out about the wheel studs. When the wheel studs started failing because of what we were doing at the track, there's nothing wrong with that except for when you add that kind of power and you add more grip and all those things, you don't want the wheels coming off, right? So yeah. we put the money into hardened wheel studs so the customer isn't gonna have a poor experience. And Vince and I will push the car far beyond what most customers will ever see. So when we deliver the car, it should be a great car that even if it, uh, let's get some track time, it's probably gonna handle just fine. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, because here we are throwing out these horsepower numbers. You and I were talking a while ago about manual transmissions, because when the, you know, the Hellcat 170, Dodge Demon 170 came out, 1,025 horsepower automatic. But then I was just saying, you know, it looks like we've reached the limits. And you said, no, we had a manual transmission with 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, we did. You know, uh, the Tremec uh, people have been outstanding. Uh, great partners of ours, great supplier and, and stuff like that. Um, their transmissions, their manual transmissions, the Tremec 6060 would handle just way more horsepower than what they advertised. And yes. we had cars on a routine basis that were off-road and had more than a thousand, even rear wheel horsepower, and that transmission uh, held up just fine. Would that be like code red? Yeah, like code red. So we started that in 07. We never produced that car because it was pretty ornery at that time, but we've since evolved and we've got 30 code reds right now in process based on the new GT500. But, you know, we, we keep it down just a little bit. It's only 1,350 horsepower. Wins. So, but that has, that has a DCT transmission. So that's the dual clutch transmission yeah. and it, it's not an automatic it's a manual run by a computer yes and if you see it and again it's a tremec and if you see that transmission work and more importantly if you feel it work and you you know what it's like on the track i love the engagement and so forth of being involved with a manual transmission to me it makes the driving experience much better agreed but if you want to go fast <laughs> yeah, me too, right? If you truly want to go fast, you want to have that DCT because as good as I am with a stick, I don't shift in 80 milliseconds. Yeah. And neither but, does anybody else. But you do, right, Eric? Oh, of course. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Aaron does. My, my lightning fast reaction time. <laughs> the, the, oh, you haven't ridden all over you. <laughs> yeah. So what, what's your take on manuals and DCTs and all that type of so stuff in terms of the heritage? It's of fun yeah. to me. You know, I've got a 2015 GT350 that I love, and it's got the six-speed and it's got you know that flat plane Craig motor, and that is so much fun to drive. 
but I get my 22 GT500 with the DCT, and it is also fun to drive, just a different experience. So I think it's kind of what you want that visceral experience to be on what, you, what your preference is. So here's the proverbial questions you guys may or may not be able to answer. Um, we know the affinity and the longevity of the GT500 uh, lineage. Are we going to see another GT350 from you guys? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, know, you know, Winston, <laughs> Carol's favorite car was the next one. <laughs> and we're always working on the next one. So you'll just have to figure it out yourself. Have Fine. To wait and see. We're taking a trip to Vegas sometime soon. <laughs> awesome. Why don't we talk a little about the charity? Go on over and take a look Let's at the charity sure. car. Okay, here we are. Six, a 68 GT350 recreation. Correct. A convertible, and this is going up for ch for charity auction here. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the charity and then what this is all about? Definitely. So this car is built by Legendary Motors up in the Northeast uh, under license with Shelby. It was donated to the Carroll Shelby Automotive Technical Training School at Northeast Texas Community College, which is the school that Carroll started almost 15 years ago, a little over 15 years ago now. He grew up in East Texas. He wanted to provide an avenue for kids coming out of high school that didn't want to have a college degree to get a trade education that could really provide them a livelihood going forward. So partnered with that school, the Shelby Foundation supports it. This car was actually donated straight to the school's foundation. And so we're doing that with, in conjunction with the school and the foundation tonight at five o'clock here at Bear Jackson. Awesome. And tell me a little bit about the build. What, what did this start with? Um, you know, what do we got under the hood? What, uh, all Gary right, you bet. So this one actually started as a 68 Mustang convertible. Okay. 289, two barrel, four speed, right? <laughs> and with uh, the help of Barry Smith's team at Legendary GT Classic Cars and the college, Northeast Tex Texas Community College. In fact, we got Beth running around here somewhere, a, a female tech that was actually nice. working. She actually worked on this car and she'll be up on stage with us tonight uh, for that. But if you look at this car, and I know we don't have the hood down right now, but this car, if you look at the body panel fit and finish and things like that, and you look at a, a real original 68, yes. this is actually far better. Of course. Right? Yep. So this has both the Ford serial number, just like they did in 68, and yep. a Shelby serial number. So they've got both. So. In this particular case, you've got the original one and you've got the five digit Shelby one, just like the ones we built in 68. Yes. And we've gone through completely ground up, rotisserie, start from scratch to make sure that this thing is really a bad boy. And the ironic thing with this is it's got a Roush engine. Now. So if you look <laughs> at it, we'll see it on stage tonight. Yes. You know, everybody thinks that we ought to be arch enemies. In fact, Carol was very good friends with Jack Roush, yes. and we did stuff with him and so forth too. That's a really good engine, okay? And uh, we should fire that thing up maybe uh, a little bit later, and you can hear this thing run, because when you hear it, you'll know that's a healthy small block. So it's, it's pretty cool. But this car has been totally refabbed, you know, top to bottom, fit and finish is just wonderful. Trim at five speed? Four speed. Okay, so you're original with the four top speed. loader, original top Got loader, it. four speed. I didn't know if you were doing the upgrade down like that or not. What's uh, what's horsepower on the engine? Do we know? I don't know what the engine has, but I if by listening to it, I'll bet it starts with a four, which is nice. Cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's interesting for me is you recently bought an archive. I did. So you're correct. Yeah. So talk about this. I mean, and it's stuff that hardly anybody's ever seen. That's correct. So in working through um, our own collection of things, and the, my dad, brothers, and I, we ran across new close, or we were close friends with Bill Neal, who was one of Carol's good friends going way back to the 50s. And so he passed away a few years ago. His family was selling the, his photo archive and negatives and everything, and he had an extensive collection of photographs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, really all decades uh, that he would use as the basis for his artwork primarily. Yes. But there's a lot of photographs, particularly of Carroll racing in the 50s that nobody's ever seen before. And so we're going through and cataloging it all right now. We'd like to do something with that in the future so we can get a little more out in the public. Yep. We don't quite have that derived yet, but it's coming at some point. Uh, but very excited to see that piece of history because these are photos that have been around obviously for well over 60, 70 years now and nobody's seen them. So it's, uh, I'm excited that, that we have that, and it's a great piece of history for us to maintain. And if memory serves me correctly, you said you found some pictures of there in there of Carol at his first race 
Which... Uh, yes, so he had a picture of Carroll in the MG that he won his first race in in Norman, Oklahoma, which I hadn't seen that one before as well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, really from the 53 on, just more photos of, in the Cat Allard, in the Jaguar, you know, several of the Ferraris that he raced, just things that, uh, it's all known, but just hadn't seen photos of these before. Because we, so many people think of Carroll just as with cars, Yeah. but he was one of the best, I could, endurance drivers, I would for sure put him in the category of the 1950s, won the law in 1959, yep. and a number of other races. Uh, and then one of the top guns for hire with American privateers. He really was, and uh, it's funny because a lot of people that don't know his career that well don't understand, he won the road racing championship racing Ferraris primarily. Not for Ferrari himself, but for the yeah. guys that were bringing him over. Yes. Um, uh, like Caravano and whatnot. So he, he knew the cars went fast. That wasn't his problem with Ferrari. His problem was with the man. So. Yes. And But he, if, and I might be wrong on this, but wasn't he reasonably good friends with Dino Ferrari, Enzo's son? Uh, he, I think he knew him well. I don't know a lot of details about that. Yeah. A little before my time. So. No, because I remember talking with Carol, and I'm, I'm just. Um, you know that was coming to mind. Yep. So this is this is going across the block tonight. Correct. Correct. Five o'clock tonight. Cool. All money going to the charity. All money goes to the school. So and that'll help support scholarships and some new equipment that they need. And for those who want to find out more about the charity, where should they go? So you can go to Carol Shelby or Shelby.com and then go to the Carol Shelby Foundation tab on that website. It talks all about what the foundation supports. In addition to the school in East Texas, we've got four other schools we're now supporting, and we also help families with children going through transplant care with Carol's history with the heart and kidney transplant. That was the other leg of the foundation that we do a lot of support behind. Awesome. Anything you need to say, Mr. Patterson, that we haven't hit on so far? Well, you know what? It's uh, It's been a lot of dang fun. And uh, if you want to have a lot of fun, this is a place to go. And you know what? What an iconic uh, day here at Barrett Jackson. We, we appreciate everybody being here and uh, appreciate you coming out. The legacy continues because of all of this. Yeah, dude, it's been great. Thank you, Winston. Yeah. Sir? And we'll see you on the road. Thanks for joining us.